counts. Our Republic has never been born in need of change that brings better men to all our citizenry. It is not just during an election that ordinary Namibian folks talk about development reaching all corners of their country. It is not just during election year that people are crying for jobs, for economic development, for housing, or corruption activities that are happening and that has become an order of the day. Talking about the future matters and engaging our young people in conversations about politics and how it impacts them is important as we are going out to cast our votes. Now, members of the Central Committee nominated delegates from region. It is important to put it down that many of us wish to serve in various positions. <clears throat> but we, should, we wish to serve for the wrong reasons in various positions that we want. We wish to serve our families in certain positions of power. We wish to serve our statuses as individual in positions of power. And we cannot prepare to want to lead our country if we are self-centered in our politics. Our politics cannot be based on self-centeredness. Over the last five years, I have seen ruling parties MPs. 60% of them were mum, quiet in the National Assembly. And I ask myself, if that is representation, then I do not want such a representation. You can't afford to prepare to lead people in silence. You can't want to serve in a position of power and influence, and you are seated quiet in the council meetings. You are seated quiet in the National Assembly meetings. You are seated quiet in the regional councils meeting, but yet you want to be on the forefront of changing the lives of others. I want to speak to you to underscore the deep value of the deep values of republicanism, to be a republican. You can't want to lead a country, a people, a polity, a civilization without having the love for your country. You can't want to represent a movement such as ours if you don't have a deep love for your country. Namibia, this country which is the quantum of our hopes and the bearer of our soul, is more important than PDM. It is more important than SWAPO. It is more important than any political formation. Namibian survival is more cardinal than any political formations in our republic. When you come to the fore and be given a task to lead, you must lead in the broader interest of the country. Namibia is our country. I want to urge you, members of the Central Committee, and especially regional coordinators, we are going to run a campaign of no insults. We are not going to be the movement insulting our political adversaries. Let them do that to us. We have a better job to sell. We have a manifesto that SWAPO cannot match. We have a manifesto now that they are running to political consultants and international consultants to write them a manifesto. Their manifestos cannot promise anything because for the last 29 years they could not deliver on any of their manifestos. So fellow Namibians, we are not going to insult the ruling party and their leaders on personalities and what they do in their bedrooms or what they don't do in their private lives. We are going to focus on a policy-oriented and ideas-oriented political campaign. Regional coordinators, I want to urge you, we are not going to promote vulgar language and violence in this election. PDM, everywhere we go, we send the message of peace, we will run an anti-violence campaign in the broader interest of the country, which is the bearer of our soul, quantum of our hopes, Namibia. We are going to put men and women, young and old, to the fore. But these representatives must not think that you are being sent there to go and represent your personal values or your personal ambition. We are not going to send people to parliament to go and be quiet like the Swapo MPs. If you want to be quiet there, please make space for other people. 
We want to send leaders that are going to fight from the front lines to make sure that the Namibian house is protected, that the Namibian children are serviced, that our people are pushed back. The frontiers of poverty are pushed back and our country is taken to the poor. Ladies and gentlemen, we are once again the only movement that have presented a credible alternative to the ruling party by launching and releasing our manifesto. Our manifesto is talking about a number of things, and I'm very proud of you, Central Committee, that this manifesto was before you and it was approved by you. But one of the things that we are speaking about is a one constituency, one factory. We intend to put processing lines and factories where the people are, to limit migration and to promote job creation. We will end the story of Namibian young people being asked for experience. Every young Namibian who is looking for a job is told, please give us 10 years of experience. We shall give in-service training to Namibian young people to give them startups in their life by giving them jobs in their constituency. We shall endeavor to put up a plan, an industrial plan that addresses every niche market of every constituency. Those that are not thinking are saying, how can Benani promise in his first 100 days clinics in all constituencies? Those who dare not to think should not think that others do not think. We are going to buy sea fried containers, empty 12 meters containers. We are going to reconvert them into clinics. We are going to put air conditioning in them and we are going to put it down in every constituency. The ruling party has failed to think for the last 29 years. We will help them think. We shall develop schools infrastructure by putting up precast houses through our Etungo commercial projects that we are going to launch in this country. Nearly every tender in this country is inflated. Many of our children are going to schools under trees because if a tender goes out of a school, it's always quadrupled. We are going to make sure that pre cast schools will be built with the same development budget and three times more schools shall be delivered in the times of our governments. We are developing desalination plants. We have been thinking a lot, saying a lot in the National Assembly, that if you want to change this country's lot, bring water to the people. Bring water closer to families, to farmers, so that you catapult the opportunities that are in the agricultural sector. We dare to think that we want to bring down unemployment from 28% to 11% through agricultural modernization and mechanization. These are promises that are well thought out, that are deliverable. And many of our policies that we are bringing forth are policies that are being implemented by the best countries in the world. Today, our economy is inextricably linked to the South African economy. If the South African Republic closes its border for two, two weeks, Namibians will go hungry. We shall create an in-house capacity of food security in our country that no country will close its border and Namibians will go hungry. Because we dare to believe that Namibians can be able to be the masters of their own destiny. Yes. Yeah. Fellow Namibians, we should talk about competence and efficiency. The purpose of us converging here is to hold our electoral college, which will nominate capable individuals who are going to parliament. In a, democ in a democratic country such as ours, parliament plays a very important role. It legislates, makes laws, it changes the lives of our people. Parliament members are elected to represent our people, the country. They act as the voice of the people, therefore it is accountable to the people of Namibia. So those political parties that are making themselves guilty of sending corrupt people to parliament, we are not going to be in that league. We are going to send honest, capable Namibians to change the law of our people. I urge all our voters to elect candidates of the highest quality who will represent and implement the commitments set out in our manifesto on behalf of all our people. Candidates who have the abilities to change the lives 
of others. We should not bring only change to those we like. We like. We should bring change to those more that disagrees with us. Just as we disagree with the statement made by President Hage Kengo, denying the people of Kavango development because they have voted for us during 89 election. We are not going to put up a government that will fight against those who disagree with us. In fact, it is the purpose of political conversation to convince those that disagree with you with purpose that you are different. But for a leader to say that, I deny you development, and we are seeing that Kavango, with an arable land, with water next to its rivers, is one of the poorest regions in the country. And the president of the country dares to say, I don't give you development because you did not vote for me. What a travesty and a paralysis of constitution, undermining the constitution of the country. We are not going to send you to parliament to go and represent PDM. You are going to represent the values the ethos, the aspirations, the visions of the people of Namibia. So when we are choosing candidates amongst ourselves, we shall disagree. It is human to disagree. But let's disagree not to be disagreeable. It is important for us to fight the whole night. We shall fight the whole night through. But when we arrive at a common list, we shall have a list that represents the diversity and the best arsenal that we can put together to change the lot of our country. We are an organization and a movement that wants to change our country. And that change starts with changing the way how we do things. Making sure that we create a culture of give and take. Leadership cannot only be about Benani. Leadership cannot only be about mustard. Leadership cannot be about you only. It is about others around you. We must have a culture of compromise to agree that, fine, I have a point, but maybe my point cannot change and not win the day. We are consolidated. I'm very glad that we are a movement that has very, if any, little squabbles. And over the last five years, our leadership that I happen to be first among equals have provided stoic leadership to minimize political disagreements and squabbles that has eroded a number of parties. Some political candidates that are running for presidents are already being questioned by their own political structures. Now, how do you want to seek mandate if your structures are already denying you that you are their candidate? At least, we have a better opportunity to challenge the ruling party. This morning I saw a Swapo Kala day, people passing me. And I said, things have changed really. The ruling party will have it the hard way this time around. They would have it the hard way to change and to convince Namibia why they should be voting. We will have it easy. We will have it easy to convince the people of this country that we are the real alternative. We should fight the two-third majority to the nail. I say to you that there is no better opportunity to break down the two-third majority. That one will go, we know it. But there are a number of issues that we must address. And members of the media quote me. We are very worried about the Angolan voters that were given voters' card. Because the ruling party wants to show up its numbers with Angolan voters. That is for the reason that the ruling party cannot provide 2.5 million people with identity documents for the last 29 years. There are more cattle in our country than people. Every cattle in Namibia has an ear tech. It has an identity. But the people of Namibia do not have an identity 29 years after independence. <laughs> Deliberately so to try to tear from Southern Angolan voters. We've made our research that there are a number of Southern Angolan voters that are sitting both with Namibian voters card and Angolan voters card. We want to call upon the authority, and especially Home Affairs to close our borders during elections. A week before elections, our borders should be closed because 
The only numbers that Swapo can shore up to get another 80% is the Angolan vote. And we know their strategy. We also want to address ECN. That is failing to produce enough information about election. A deliberate strategy to undermine because they want to see more voter apathy for the ruling party to get its way. ECN, do your job. Deliver your job. On, the, on Monday, we are going to challenge you again on the EVMs. We have challenged the ECN on one matter. They don't want to include political parties at the last collation centers when they are verifying the last votes before release. The law is very clear that members of opposition parties and stakeholders, not only members, political players rather, should be involved from the beginning to the end. But then the commissioner chairperson says, please trust us. Why should we trust you? We don't trust you. We will demand it again on Monday that PDM shall be involved from the beginning to the end. We shall end this impunity where certain political parties, representatives are at the coalition centers together with the men in black, the security arsenal of our country. Political parties have the right to supervise, to monitor while the last election results have been collated. We shall demand that, and our delegation that is going to be headed by Secretary General to the Electoral Commission will demand two things. We are demanding EVMs with a paper trail, with, with a verified auditor paper trail. We are demanding participation of political actors at the last coalition centers to make sure that the last results that are coming from the region and at the national coalition centers that the same results are being transmitted to the country. Because we have seen an anomaly where Results are never posted at regional levels. They are brought to a national collection centers, and sometimes more people that have voted, that have not, vote, that have not voted, are, more constituencies get more percentage than those that have voted. And we have seen these things in elections. They are reading these elections. And they have only one strategy to get back that power, is by reading it, because they won't have it. I want to thank you, regional coordinators and leaders of this movement that we have kept this movement alive for the last five years. We have kept our vehicles through the regions, we have branded ourselves early as possible, we have done our job, nearly there is no corner of this country that the PDM has not touched twice. We are already going to touch those regions double fold this time around. We have done our strategy correct, we are everywhere in this country. We need to stand together now as Namibians, otherwise our futures will be compromised, even further and destroyed. We need to stand together and build an alternative in the interest of all our populace. History lessons cannot fill the stomachs of our people. Looking back cannot take us forward. The ruling party cannot lecture us on history. They must lecture us on what they have done with the power that was bequeathed to them. As the PDM, we should one in Namibia, that we will end Swapo's privilege and elitism, where you can only receive support if you support a certain faction within the ruling party, where you can only get a business tender if you are a family, if you are a friend of the first family. <laughs> Namibia must be for all of us, not just for a few comrades who tell the president what they think he wants to hear while stuffing their own pockets. The other day I was surprised, one of the advisors <coughs> tweets and posts, we are in the land of Hage Genko. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Young people thinking that we are in the land of Hage Genko. We are in the land of the brave. Namibia, our country. Not a country of Anani or Gaingo or whoever. The country of our people, of our forebearers that fought gallantry on these soils. Ladies and gentlemen, I was given a privilege by your rules to nominate five candidates as presidential nominees to the National